Entrepreneurship is not the exclusive preserve of any particular sector, segment of society. Whether you are in the private sector, whether you are in government, whether you are in any other part of activity around the world, anything you do can have a streak of entrepreneurship. Yes. Because the reason being, life is all about challenges and dealing with the unknown. That's what gives you excitement. So the first thing, if you are an entrepreneur, is you get excited about these things. Secondly, it is tougher, having been in the private sector and government both. Yes. Governments need entrepreneurship more than the private sector because there is this DNA in our minds which says, or in our bodies, which says that government, don't do be entrepreneurial, be predictive, follow the past, etc. Things are changing, but that's the DNA I walked in. And when you go, uh, into government, the first thing you look at if you want an entrepreneur and you want change, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, change is the only constant in life. Never fight it, take advantage of it. Change will make you a better person. Of course, it can also get you in trouble if you change the wrong way or change in the wrong direction. So, in government, if a government can have the entrepreneurial spirit, and I think we are sitting in a mm. part of the world yes. where you see that in spades. The way things work in Dubai, the way things work, uh, they, they don't, don't work in many other countries. You look at the airline here, airlines have their cyclicalities too, but I travel probably as much if not more than most people in this room, thousands of miles a month. And I will tell you that Emirates, in terms of innovation, in terms of knowing what the customer wants, is way, way ahead of many in the competition. So, the point is, think out of the box, see what you can do differently and smartly, and then you will be able to deal with change and reflect the needs of what your customers want. Even in a country, your customers, in another way, are citizens of the country. You have to meet their needs. Everything they do should be automatic and hassle-free. And if you do that, that's innovation and that's entrepreneurship. For a private sector company, a new idea. i give you one example. I think all of us use it probably. Going from point A to point B. We all need to do that every day, many times a day. Somebody thought of something and said, there's so much idle capacity. Let's come up with something called e Uber. That is innovation. Yeah. That is breaking the status quo. Of course, they had to fight the black cabs in London. Today, if you talk to black cab uh, uh, drivers, they say, we found our niche. They do one thing and they have come up with now, you can book a black cab, you can go uh, fixed rate on a black cab, yeah. and they get the advantage of the bus lane in London, which is a big uh, uh, advantage if you are in traffic. Obvious. There is no way out except adapting change. Now, one thing, just as an example, what is this? To many people, it's a communication device. But to me, it is empowerment. It is really an access to the world. I can call anywhere in the world. I can buy things. I can sell things. I can talk to people. I can watch a movie. I can do... S now, look at how our lives have changed. And they are still changing. Yes. Change is evolving. One example is retailing. Today, more and more people are buying through instruments like this. The company Alibaba, I think many of you may have seen and met Jack Ma, I know him very well. You go to his office in Hangzhou, you can't believe you are in a, in a developing country. It's just a total different DNA. People are buying uh, stuff from him. Now he has Alipay. Alipay is one of the biggest uh, money uh, transfer systems in China and more are coming. And I can go on and on just on Alibaba. The innovation in the last five years is amazing. Amazon should be mentioned too, but Alibaba is going beyond that. So, change is there. Government's role, because you ask government's role, and I've worked uh, only 10 years at ties. When we fixed our economy in Pakistan, we had, they said, what is your philosophy? I said three words, liberalize, deregulate, privatize. Get out of the way. Let the private sector run with it. And, of course, keep an eye on everything so that the people's interest is protected. So, back to where we are going from here. This piece of equipment has really changed our lives. 
This is an enabler now. This is no longer a product. It's a means to an end. It's a connection. Connectivity has increased dramatically in the world today. And because connectivity has increased, every day you'll see new innovation coming out of this. And that is why change will also be painful for certain businesses. And traditional, say large supermarkets today, traffic is reduced because people are going on the web and buying the same thing. And I can go on and on and on. One of the major reforms I did when I took over the country's management was blow out the telephone system and install, privatize it totally. Yes. So our uh, state uh, telephone company, yes. we had an auction and Etisalat bought the whole company. I gave, it, gave the keys happily to, uh, and then we deregulated. We now have four or five yes. private uh, cellular networks, all private. And they are competing like hell and the bandwidth has gone exponent grown exponentially. So connectivity is established. Yes. Now once you establish connectivity, then you need to have the products on the other side so that it creates economic activity. And it cuts the cycle times. Yes. We spend so much time waiting for things to arrive and all that. Now you order, you forget and it's there the next day. Then the parcel business comes in, UPS type stuff. All that is changing. And as I said earlier, if you look at Alibaba and their product profile 10 years ago and today, you'll be shocked at where it's going. Money transfer now. You don't even want to go to a bank. Banks are being disintermediated. You go here, you can transfer money anywhere within reason if you have money in your account and you're connected. So uh, the government has to create that enabling environment for reform. So when people ask me, what is your economic philosophy? Liberalize, deregulate, privatize. Get the government out of everything and they should be the regulator and provider for the infrastructure. Maybe that's it. So uh, going forward, you will see more uh, technology coming in, more connectivity coming in, cycle times will reduce, people will, disruptive technology will become a way of life and it's a, there is no reason to be afraid of it. No longer do you have to go and queue up to make a money transfer anywhere. You just punch it here, yes. it'll go. And I can give you hundreds of examples. So uh, we need to be having the right mindset, which we do, but the government has to provide the infrastructure. That bandwidth has to be provided. And any government who denies its citizens the bandwidth is really pushing back the growth rate and at the right cost. Because it's a highway. You have to have a toll, but don't make the toll so high that the average citizen cannot go on it. That is the social part of it. We have to keep balance in the growth. Thank you.